In my last video on I-Term, we had the I-Term at 40, and then we brought the P-Gains up to 30 and saw how that looked for flight and oscillation. But I didn't do a test run where I showed where we kept the P-Terms at 5, I-Terms at 40, and did the D-Terms at 30 to see what that looks like. What that's going to do is slow down the oscillations, but they're still going to exist. Let's check it out. Make sure we got logging on. You can kind of see it already. See how the oscillations... And this is, and I'll compare that, I'll show a little skit of what it looks like then, if you recall. of what it recalled what the oscillations look like with I terms at 40 and D term at 5. So you can see how, again, P term is the term that dampens I term oscillation, not the D term. Because when I had the P term at... Oh! Gets out of control there. Because when I had the uh, P term at 30, we didn't have this issue of any oscillations. I was actually able to do acro and freestyle. I am not going to try to do a, a, a roll here or a flip. Uh, it's just a little too much. So you can see if you're getting, like, I don't know if I could try to emphasize that, but imagine if you, you know, having wind conditions and you're getting kind of these slow oscillations back and forth. Again, that can just be your eye term is too long, is too high. And, uh, you can see how slow these are just from steps response move. So obviously if my stuff was a little closer in ratio, you know, it's here it's very still very pronounced, right? But if my things were a little slow, closer in ratio yet, you'd have even slower wobble and I term oscillation than you see here with, again, I term at 40 and then D term here at 30. And then P term in this scenario is at 5. Look at that. That sound familiar? Here guys, let's look at this real quick. I get on the throttle and I get off the throttle. That sound familiar? Off the throttle, look at that. Yeah, that's uh that's I term. So hopefully that helps. Okay, with that, let's take a look at a log and talk about I turn tuning a little bit. Okay, in this log, this is that same flight we just had, and I was, this is in the very beginning where I was doing those twitch moves back and forth. What I have pulled up here is simplified. I'm just looking at the roll axis and I have my P term, my I term, the set point and the gyro. So the set point is my sticks. So you can see my little stick overlay diagram here. And as I move this stick to the left, you can see how that is moving this degrees per second rotation command from zero degrees per second to 247 degrees per second. And then of course the piddly loop reacts to try to have the quad follow that. Again, the I gains are 40, D gains at 30, and in this example, P gains are at five, so really low P gains. So in that scenario, what's happening that you're getting these slow oscillations that continue back and forth is because there's no P term to really push the quad into the move. So the I term is the term that's gonna push. And the D term really opposes all motion or all pushing of the quad. So it just opposes even further, makes the gap or the error even bigger. And then the I term just continues to build to overcome that. So as I push that over, uh, you can see the quad does start to initially go into the move. But as I go to bring that back, there's a huge gap between the set point, my command to come back to zero stick versus what the quad, when it actually starts to come back to zero stick. We're talking about, you know, if I just do a mark point from there to there and just kind of eyeball it, we're talking about like 100 milliseconds of lag. So it's a pretty big lag between my stick inputs versus what the quad is actually moving to match. You can see here that the I term is what's causing it to push back and forth. So let's just focus on this a little bit. 
as my stick is at this uh, fixed roll rate to the, to the left hand side, and, and then I bring it back to center stick, the eye term go ahead and it starts to push up to bring the gyro to come back to that zero stick set point. You can kind of see right at this point, as soon as the gyro signal right here is not on top of the set point, the P term starts to push to bring it back to the set point. However, since there's not a lot of P gain, it doesn't really actually make that much difference in the PID loop. It's a push, but it's a slight push and it doesn't really get the job done. It doesn't really start to spin the motors up as you can see on this diagram over here. So the I term starts to build an error. Well, the first thing it needs to do is it actually is wound up to push into the move yet. So it needs to unwind back to zero. So from here, from this point here, where I start to actually command the stick to go back to this point here, it's really just still unwinding. So all this time, it's actually still pushing the other direction or really not pushing back to go and come back the other direction because it has to, again, unwind back to zero. Once it gets to this point right here, the I term crosses this zero point. So you can see here, it's still the negative number on this side. And as it goes over to this side, now it's the positive number. So it crosses the zero threshold and now it actually starts to push the quad and then you can actually see this slight amount of motion and this slight amount of motion is just because of the p term here but it's just not pushing very hard and then you can see that this really starts to ramp up soon as the i term starts to build on this side and that's great and it brings the quad back to zero rotational rate however at that point the i term is built up so much that it continues to keep rotating it past this point and it's still continued to rotate to the right until it gets up to this point here. The I term has now come back and unwound back down to zero pushing maneuver. However, there's a ton of pit error. The difference between the set point here and the gyro signal up here, is a huge gap between there. So then again, the I term starts to wind up and push to have the gyro come back down. By the time it gets to zero here, now the I term is really, really wound up on this side. So you can see how you get this oscillation effect where every time the gyro is actually where it needs to be, the I term is wound up. And every time that the I term isn't wound up, you have this huge amount of pit error where it then starts to wind up again. So again, that's why you have this oscillation. And the more you increase D term, it's just gonna get worse and worse. It's not gonna get any better because the D term, if I turn that on here, you can see is always fighting against, it's kind of the opposite sign of the I term. So it's, it's just making it slow down and be even more sluggish. For I term induced oscillations, the more you increase the D term, it's going to make them slower, like we just saw in the video clips there between the I term and the P term and that kind of stuff. However, it is not going to fix the oscillation issue. It's just gonna make it slower and slower and slower. And eventually you just have these really slow I term wobbles. And that's because you have a high D term, your P term is still too low and you have a high I term. So let's look at a section after we do the throttle chop where we're on the throttle and then chop it down and see what happens. So this is a great quad, but one of the downsides of it is it is off balance. So whenever I do a throttle chop, it tends to want to nose dip down. And you can see that right here by checking out the image. As I go and I come off the throttle, watch right here, I'm chopping the throttle. You can see the nose pushes down and you know, you can see the, the, that reflected right here in the pitch gyro signal. And then of course the I term, the P term and the I term go ahead and all three terms actually, since it's an outside force, it's the difference between going from full thrust to basically in a free floating state that all three terms are pushing it to not do that. So it's the P terms pushing down, the D terms pushing down since it's a motion going forward and the I term is pushing down as well. So eventually they do compensate or the quad comes to rest and settle at that point. However, the I term is really wound up at that point. And of course, then we start to get into that oscillation where this starts to, the gyro starts to come back down to the set point. However, and you can see the set point is right here on the line. It's not moving at all. 
that the eye term is now super wound up at that point so then it causes it to come down, drag down and overshoot. You can kind of see if you look at this and you can see it in the last one as well, that the gyro will start to map the same waveform. So if you kind of zoom back, you can see that once you start to get into this oscillation that the eye term goes up and down and up and down and it will cause the gyro then to go up and down and kind of map and follow it almost exactly not you know it it's kind of falls apart here a little bit but you can see the similarity in a trend here this sinusoidal wave and then the gyro just following that same sine wave so in this specific condition we do need all the terms to push the opposite direction so we need to have a good pit strength that really needs to be tuned but the main culprit for that pitch bobble is not correcting it through I term, it's really correcting it through the P term, and that P term needs to either be boosted with anti-gravity, which is something that's gonna come in Betaflight 4.3. Anti-gravity is gonna have a P term boost alongside the I term boost to address any of that throttle motion, and it will, it's gonna, it should help a lot. I've seen some comparisons back and forth of the new code, and it does have an improvement there. So it should, I don't know if it's gonna be the end all be all, but it's, I think it's gonna help. So this is all great and good, right? So now we kind of understand the dynamics of the eye term, but the biggest question is, great, how do I actually tune the eye term? Tell me how to tune it. So in the previous video, I talked about how it really should be I, then P, then D, for the what you know kind of causes and fixes the oscillations for the next, you have the eye term, and then the P term fixes the oscillations from the eye term, and the D term fixes the oscillations for the P term. However, in tuning practice, you really go the other direction. From a holistic standpoint, you wanna have your D terms as high as they can be because they push against any outside motion. So you have to have your filters set up, get them to a you know rolled in point that are pretty aggressive, but not, you know, you have enough filtering, but not too much filtering. And I have lots of videos on that. The next part is really getting that P to D balance. So you have the ratio between the P term and the D term. So once you have your P and D balance kind of squared away, as I showed in many videos, then you want to sh move this P and D gain strength up as high as you can be until you start to get the D term oscillation. Then you know you've that's as high as your D term can go. And then obviously that you know sets how high your D term can be. And then if you have your P D balance appropriate, that then sets where your P term needs to be. So you don't have any bounce back from the P term to the D term. And then your last term really is your I term. And you can adjust the ratio between your I term and all the other terms with the master slider. So you can see here, if I move the master up and down, it holds these all these ratios down here and just moves them all up and moves them all down. Well, if I move my slider all the way down, but then I can move my P and D gain strength back up or and or my uh, stick response gain strength all the way up. You can see how it's gonna move the derivative, the proportional term up, the feed forward term up because we move these up, but it's gonna keep that I term down here nice and low. So yeah, from a slider perspective, there's not a whole lot of flexibility in the I term. I wish there was more, it might be something I kind of work, talk with some of the guys about and see if we can make a little bit more flexibility there for the future, but as of right now, there's not a ton of flexibility. This said, iTerm does have a really wide tuning window from my experience. So I generally leave the iTerm gains where they're at, at the default. I typically don't move them up unless I see one thing in logs, and that is if I see something like this right here. This is trace template setup number four on the UAB Tech trace templates. And what we're seeing here is that just in smooth forward flight, my I term has kind of wound up to a certain position and holding there. And that's kind of normal on the pitch access for that to occur. And it's not alarming, you, you know, it is expected for it to wind up like that. However, you don't want it to wind up too far because then when it has to reverse and go the other direction, well, first it needs to unwind. And that unwinding time can actually cause the gyro to go off course. That's the one sign is if you see your I terms start to grow or settle in logging and the gyro signal is kind of following it like a mirror image of it, that means your gyro is off because of the I term. And if the I term is really wound up while it's doing that, it could be the result that you don't have enough I term on that specific axis which is allowing it to wind up too much. You have to keep in mind with the I term 
it will keep winding up until it makes the quad kind of meet a momentary position or it stops you know going off drift since it's a cumulative term it will start to push and if it says well and the quad still didn't close the gap between you know the pit area between where your stick is versus where the gyro is it will just wind up some more it will just keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that until it gets to a spot where the gyro comes down to meet on but now the issue is it's really wound up down here so then if you have another dynamic move it has to unwind first before it can come back and go the opposite direction. So say you'd invert, that's where everything's now upside down. So now this I term is really wound up. Well, now it has to unwind and that unwinding during that process, it could pull the quad off and then come back up and cause like a slow bounce. So anything with a slow bounce could mean that your I term is actually too low and you need to go ahead and try to rectify that by increasing your eye gain. So you can see this all in logging. So the differential there, is if you see a slow oscillation, that is probably means you have too much eye term and or your P and D gain strength are too low. However, if you see like a bounce, that could be that your eye term is actually too low. It's wound up too much. So that when you're changing the dynamic state of things or you have a steady state condition and then you're you know messing that up by going inverted or something, now your eye term's too wound up and now it has to actually unwind and that could cause your quad to bounce. And that would be more like a single bounce, where if it's an oscillation, now your eye term's too high. So a single bounce, try to increase your eye term, see if that helps. Oscillation, then decrease your eye term, see if that helps. Okay, well that is it. Again, thanks for your continued support and we'll see you on the next one.